Hello, and welcome back to the Matt Yasa channel. I'm starting off here by attaching this nine millimeter solid rod to a 28 millimeter rod. This will be my handle, or what's also called a punty. And I wish I had a little bit larger rod, maybe a 14 millimeter to punty up with, but my stock is running a little low. And so I'll have to be careful with this one so it won't lose stability as I'm heating up the larger section. And so in my last video, I was working on a vacuum pump to demonstrate the vac stack process in order to make your own lined tubing. But I'm still in the process of moving things around and hooking it up in the shop. And I also have a pretty busy schedule this weekend, so I figured why not do a implosion marble demo instead. And now I'm not planning to make it too fancy, maybe just a few dots. I just wanna kinda of go into the process and show you how it works. So I'll start off by heating up this large section of glass to start to round it out and get it very molten and then flatten it out into a disc. And to gather it back nice and quickly, I wanna focus a little bit behind the tip, kind of on the main section of the rod. But with that handle, I can't go too far back. The heat likes to radiate out from the glass following the inverse square law which simply means the intensity of an effect will be inversely proportional to the distance squared from where the effect originates. But now with that end very molten, I'm gonna bring it down and smash it on my graphite pad. Just a very beautiful glass shot. You can tell from the red glow, it's still very molten on the inside. And then you can see those ridges left behind from the pressing process. It kind of reminds me of a fingerprint, but it's from the molten glass solidifying against the graphite. Graphite is highly conductive and will quickly absorb the heat right out of the glass. And so as I'm pushing it down, the glass kind of cascades over and sets up into those rings. And so by heating up the surface to molten, I can melt out those rings and give me a nice even layer, a nice canvas to start laying down my color. And so this is a cadmium red. I did a video recently about protecting your cadmium colors from boiling by layering a coat of clear glass over them. And this is the one from that video. It still has a little bit of clear on it. I'm just gonna lay down one dot, so I think that'll be enough for me. So for applying dots, you'd most definitely wanna warm the glass up that you're applying the dot to. You never wanna apply your molten glass to cold glass as it's gonna cause a lot of extra stress and most likely a crack later. And it'll also trap a little bit of air between the connection that you can see pretty easy from the inside. It's kind of a large dot. I'm trying to melt it back into a sphere to get it ready to implode. And so for the next dots, I'm grabbing some North Star Blue Exotic. It's a color rod that's packed with silver, so it should react in the flame and change to some nice metallic blues. Before you go in to apply your next dot, it's always good to shape the end of the rod, kind of sharpen it up a little bit like a pencil or a crayon. How you apply it here is gonna affect how it looks in the end, so you can't have it all stringy and weird has to be kind of sharp and ready for a good connection. And so I'm heating up both sides and then pushing it right into that clear. I'm not tapping it onto the clear, but pushing it straight into it. The first red one I did was a little bit softer as I was trying to kind of line it up there, but these ones are looking real good. A good push into the clear there. 
and these blue exotic ones are still a little bit large for a normal dot. If you make them small, you can get more detail into your piece. I've seen people make a whole scenery out of dots. There's really a lot you can do with glass. With the years I've been at this and everything I know, I'm still really amazed at a lot of the work I see coming out from these other glass artists. But checking out other people's work is also a good way to get uh, ideas and inspiration for your own. It does get a little frustrating as people are pretty secretive of their techniques. I always see something pretty amazing once in a while and I just have to ask, you know, what did you do there to get that effect? But you can't. Or, or I mean you can ask, but it's just, they probably won't say. I think it's definitely more of a natural thing, you know, wanting to protect what you know. For me, I like to share my knowledge or experience if I can. It's a good feeling to know someone's been able to uh, move forward or kind of progress themselves with it. And that's ultimately what's uh, important is moving forward. You're not getting too stuck in the past. But to move forward with this implosion marble, I'm going to start to focus my heat on the back of it, kind of push some heat all the way through. Just a little bit of base heat, not too much to where I start to destabilize the punty. But then I'll flip it around and start to push a lot of heat into the front of it, the surface there. And the idea is to have that clear glass begin to melt and kind of gather around the dots and begin to implode them in. So ultimately I'll be melting the disc down into a sphere. And it is quite a large disc for such little detail, but I'm really trying to focus on just the process here to show you how they suck into it. So it'll give you a good view of what's going on. And this differs a bit from the compression marble as I'm not going to actually press it down during this process. I'm going to melt it all the way back into a sphere and that'll really change the end look of the dots. If I were to press it out again after I have it all melted in, it would end up flattening the top of the dots out. Kind of like a plateau or a mushroom. It's actually used for flower marbles. You can press out lines into petals and leaves on the inside. It's, it's pretty cool. I've done a couple flower marbles. It's definitely not my specialty, but I'll make sure to get one on here pretty soon. And here you can see the disc has flattened out quite a bit. The dots have melted almost completely inside. But this has taken quite a bit of time to melt it down. With the editing process, I know it doesn't seem like it has, but it's been about 30 minutes since I've put those dots on there. I haven't been heating it the entire time though, I've been uh, adjusting the cameras a little bit too. I've been finding my GoPro is getting a little bit warmer than normal, almost too hot to touch it. It is above the torch, but I put it inside the ventilation hood. I thought that'd be enough to cool it down. But I also set it to record in a higher format, a 2K, to give it a better quality. I'm thinking I'll probably hook up a small fan right next to it to give it some extra cooling. But most of the larger projects I've been doing lately have been taking about an hour to two hours to complete. Except for the glass chain necklace, that one's definitely a five to six hour project. And so now the dots are pretty well melted in. It's kind of left a little cavity here in the center, which I'm gonna fill in with some turbo cobalt. This is a highly saturated cobalt color. It's a lot of times used in place of black since it's not actually a true black, but a very, very dark transparent blue. Which makes it a little bit less sensitive than a pure black, which doesn't like a reducing flame. It can end up with some gray streaks in it, which I think I got a little bit here, but that's okay. I am using oxygen concentrators, 
So it's a little bit harder to get a nice oxidizing flame. It always ends up a little bit reducing. Renting tank oxygen can definitely have its advantages, but being able to just pull oxygen right out of the air yourself is pretty awesome. I'm putting a little bit of that dark cobalt on my punty. That way when I punty up to the back of the marble here where I added that cobalt, it'll mix in. I'm also going with a slightly colder punty, that way I can break it off later. That stiffer cobalt will break off a lot cleaner compared to clear, so you don't have to remove much of a punty mark later. And then I'm gonna just remove my punty and melt as much of this clear glass back into the front to be the focal lens. I'm usually always making the marble a little bit too big and not leaving enough glass for the lens. So I'm gonna start heating this up and condensing it back to form up the front half of my marble. I mentioned before that I often will use a single oxygen concentrator, a 10 liter per minute on this torch, the Bethlehem Bravo. But that's only for smaller projects when I'm using the center fire, the first stage of the torch. In order to utilize both stages of the torch and make large projects like this, I have to use two concentrators, 20 liters per minute total. And I mainly do that for the electricity cost and also the wear on the machine, especially if I just don't need the extra oxygen. You really don't need a flame larger than the area of glass you're trying to melt. It won't make the process any faster, but if the flame is smaller than the area, kind of like right here, then it might take a little longer. And so my last step here is to carefully knock off that punty and melt in that little mark it left. And now I know this marble definitely could be a bit more rounded. I didn't get to round the back of it here. I kind of ran out of time. That's definitely a critical detail to most marble collectors. Whoops. Gotta try to catch it before it rolls away. All right, I got it. Now that kind of happens to the best of us. Hopefully it didn't leave any marks in it when it hit the floor. I'm gonna try to finish it real quick and get it in the kiln. Implosion marble complete. And so here it is. It doesn't have a lot of detail to it, but those dots definitely did implode. From the side, you can see they've pushed their way all the way into the marble. Now when I do my next marble video, I will definitely be going more into the rounding process. That is a critical step, but I'll also be showing you my own backing technique that I do for my marbles. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out and thank you for watching the Matt Yasa channel.